it's not so much a shrine, but a daily reminder that even the heart of a warrior can break. This is done with a razor. He has the arrow and the lion for strength and bravery in his heart. And then Creighton in his lacrosse stick with 22 on it, which is beautiful. Creighton Shipman was the oldest of four. He was the first baby born in Mount Pleasant in 1997. The born leader of the Shipman Pack. He was a fabulous brother. He loved his sister and brothers more than anything in this entire world and his family. And he loved life. Always outdoors, always exercising, always playing like with neighbors, like little kids or throwing the football and talking. I mean, he didn't meet a stranger. He had that gift of making everybody feel invited. The invitation to play college lacrosse, 22 Creighton Shipman, followed an outstanding high school career. But the summer brought change. The childlike playfulness started to slip. Brass is super shiny, and I feel like that's how we all are. We have that twinkle, that zest, whatever our personalities are, that's what we are. And that summer, it was still bright, but not as bright. Creighton's inner battle simmered his freshman year at Mars Hill. Got his grades, and he did not do fine. He failed everything but one. Spring semester, he walked, quit his team. Another change, his appearance. He was very, I say very skinny, but when, um, you know, he was lean anyway, but he was very skinny and had real hollow looking eyes, like circles and exhausted looking. His behavior became more erratic. We got into an argument and um, Creighton was extremely disrespectful. And I say disrespectful, it's just respect and love are the two biggest things in our family, you know respect to yourself, to others, and how he was was not him. His first summer home from college would be short-lived. This is not okay, and you know this is not okay, and it shows me the choice is gone. You need to get help. And so um, I told him that he had to leave, and that was the hardest thing I've ever done up to that point in my life to ask somebody to leave that you love. The shine, now nearly gone, at the age of 19, a secret had turned this child's world upside down. Until someone's ready to own the walk they're walking, they're not going to tell you, even if they love you more than anything, they're not going to own it until they're ready. A month out of the house, Creighton was ready. He called for help and checked into a Georgia rehab center. He was there a month and I got a letter and from him, and that's the only way we had means of communication, is through letters. Um, and he said that uh, it was important to be honest. Mom, this is just for you. I've been doing heroin for around seven months, starting in November, shooting it for around three months. I was not expecting it. I don't know what, I, I think I was expecting probably anything else but that. That's a word that Heroin is a word that's hard to say. It's something hard to read. The road home would only be harder. Creighton's final week in rehab, his behavior changed, his plans changed. Nancy did exactly what she was supposed to do. Asking him to move out was nothing compared to telling him that I could bring him home. Because all I want to do is bring him home. But that's not supporting his life and family and recovery. Once again, Creighton turned and walked left rehab. Five miles away, Nancy saw him at a coffee shop on her way back to Charleston. And he was like, hey, Mom. And um, I was so happy. And then I broke down. I'm like, please go back to Willing Way. Please, let's go to the recovery house. We'll get help. You just need a little bit more help. And I asked him three times, and he was adamant no all three times. And so... I said, okay, well, I've got to go back to Charleston, and um, we hug each other, and I said, I love you very, very much. And I kissed him on the cheek, and he held me tighter, and he's like, I love you too, Mom, very much. And then I had to walk back to my car and leave. And that was the last time I saw him alive. No, that's the last time I saw him. Creighton Shipman died two days later in Columbia on July 17th, 125 miles from rehab. He overdosed on heroin. This is something that uh, when we were around Creighton's bed that Sunday, 
um, my daughter and boys, we were around Creighton, and um, my daughter looked at me and she said, we've got to do something about this. We made that promise as a family, and everything we've done up to this point is made as a family. And that's a promise we made to Creighton. This victim is not faceless. He's a son and a brother and a grandson. Now his mother wants to put a face on this disease for other families. I'm one of many, many, many. You know, Creighton, Creighton is my son that I love, but Creighton represents everyone. Everyone that has been lost to the seas, that's battling this disease, all these family members and families that just needed someone to say, you're not alone. The shipments are not alone. Creighton's number filled by friends and family on the field where he excelled. Red Solo Cups still serve as a reminder three months after his death. When I got that letter, you know, it was lonely because I felt very embarrassed and ashamed and scared. I was scared to death. And when we came back, I realized that we're strong and we're loved. Matthew calls for rest, but Nancy cannot, simply will not. She made a promise to her 19-year-old son and her gift, her gift to that playful child, will save a life, maybe even today.